Welcome to this tutorial. I'm going to show you how you can use the Dehancer Film Emulation plugin with your iPhone video footage um, shot using Filmic Log V3. And yeah, it's pretty simple. I've got an edit here, um, a video that you may have seen. I, I uploaded it a while ago. Um, shot with actually with the new B Grip um, 1.33 times anamorphic uh, lens version two, the second version. It's an awesome lens, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Uh, we're here to look at the Dehancer plugin. So the first thing I'm going to do here in DaVinci Resolve, um, this is version 17. I've got a existing timeline here, um, which has the uh, already graded clips. Um, we can actually look at this quickly, I suppose. Uh, it's a very simple node structure. Um, I've got our, we can turn these off. I've got our uh, original log v3, which comes out looking like this when it's properly exposed and color balanced. And those are two key things you got to remember when you're shooting. Lock your white balance correctly, lock your exposure correctly, and yeah, when you're setting exposure, avoid clipping anything, basically. You want to capture as much image information as possible. I always leave one node, which is just the, the original camera file. Um, I've got the Hanser plugin uh, installed and it's on one node. I can turn that on. Um, but you can see when we, when we just have the log v3 source image um, feeding directly into the plugin, um, as is, it's a little bit unbalanced. Um, so I use a node in between um, just to, I just use lift cam again, um, just to balance out some of the color in there a bit and I'll show you how to do that. And we'll also go through the settings that I've got in, in the Dehancer plugin as well, which you can see here. Let's go back to the edit page and let's you know start again. So what I'm gonna do is just create a fresh timeline here and call this um, edit two, and that's all correct. Okay, that's fine. Um, I can just go back to edit one and just command C, command V, copy these clips there. Because this project is was shot anamorphic, um, you can see my uh, frame size here is, uh, it's a, it's a bit of a weird, weird one, I guess. Nine, 1920 by 812. Um, I could do this in, in 3840 by about 1624, I think, which would be kind of the 4K equivalent. Um, but because I'm screen recording and things like that, I, I, I don't want it to hang. So I've um, reduced the resolution a bit there. Um, but anyway, so, uh, so let's come back to the color page. Um, and I'm basically just going to um, add a new version here, which uh, is the command key and Y. In this version, I'm just gonna delete these and show you how to do this from scratch. So first of all, I guess I will add another node and then add another node. And what we'll do first is Let's look at, let's, let's just put the Dehancer uh, plugin in there first. So I've got Dehancer installed and licensed. Um, a bit of housekeeping. Let's just call this Dehancer. I'd encourage you to always name your nodes. And you can see here, it doesn't look like anything. So let's take a quick look at at the Hanser plugin here. So source, we are going to go down to choose camera. Um, we are going to choose Apple and we're going to choose iPhone and we're going to choose Filmic Log V3 10 bit, which is what this footage was shot in. And it immediately interprets that um, image a bit more correctly here. Um, so let's take a look down here. Basically, exposure compensation just lets you adjust exposure in the clip. Um, I'm not going to mess with that. Color temperature is where you can 
um, correct if there's a bit of a color temperature um, discrepancy or it wasn't set correctly when you uh, shot the footage but I mean that use that with caution like really you need to set the white balance correctly when you shoot tint that goes with white balance um, with color temperature as well that's your green magenta shift but anyway first let's let's go through this so we have we have your film stock um, which you can choose here I'm gonna go vision 350d because that's what you'd actually shoot in these conditions low speed daylight balanced that would be a perfect film stock selection if you were shooting in in daylight outside push pull is just emulating compensating for underexposed or overexposed film so let's say if you've underexposed on purpose by a stop and you compensate for that by uh, adjusting your uh, your developing time to end up with a similar density on the film stock that's something that you can emulate here you can adjust how the plugin is interpreting black point and white point as well which is very useful you can see how this is uh, shifting the uh, parade scope um, at the bottom of the screen these are all tools that are there for you to be able to make adjustments to your source material whenever you shot something on motion picture film if you were to just scan that film you would get something that looks like this if you're looking to emulate the kind of look that you you may be used to seeing uh, in a cinema um, then you're talking about emulating a print as well um, so we can go here to Kodak 2383 which is a very common um, print film and because that's a contact print process there's another exposure happening there in, in the analog sense of actually emulating a, a film workflow and when there's another exposure there's a whole other set of variables that could affect how that print uh, f film print looks uh, the color head section is a more traditional film workflow color balance adjustment film grain uh, is pretty self-explanatory um, you can adjust the size of the grain that you're emulating the amount of grain film resolution itself how the grain is emulated in the shadows the midtones and the highlights and the film grain emulation in Dehancer is actually the most sophisticated in any film emulation plugin that I've looked at so it's it's a really scientific I guess emulation of film grain through the different dye layers as well we've got halation which we'll look at a bit more closely this is your orange uh, halo that you might see around very bright light sources bloom goes hand in hand with halation as well uh, and then vignette um, and then you've got film breathing and gate weave which emulates a mechanical artifact um, it's the kind of slight shift of the film as it's running through the camera the physical shift of it so if it's something you want to uh, emulate it's all here in Dehancer um, so what have we got here we have got the input chosen correctly um, we're not going to bother with exposure compensation temperature compensation tint compensation we're emulating Kodak Vision 350D and we've selected a, uh, a very common print film which affects the look this would be the camera negative by itself this would be a print uh, film print uh, emulation as well so yeah that's where we're at, at the moment now you can see the basic image here looks pretty good but somehow I want to shift the balance a little bit and I'll, I'll do that on a node before Dehancer so this node that we created I will label that one just uh, a, what will I call it balance adjustment I get guess balance adjust balance adjustment again good housekeeping name your nodes it will save you a lot of headaches later when you want to remember and see what nodes uh, have what operations on them okay so we're gonna adjust we're gonna make a, like some very small adjustments just to the color balance um, to get it more where I want it so we are gonna 
head over here to the color bars rather than the color wheels. Um, I'm first just going to raise the shadows a little bit and I want to reduce the green a little bit and I want to reduce the blue a little bit in the shadows. Midtones I'm going to leave where they are. Some of these highlights are pretty hot so I just want to bring down the level of the, the highlights a little bit and uh, bring maybe a touch up on the red and the green um, and uh, a bit more on the blue um, like that that's pretty much where I want to be I suppose we can look at at the difference that's made we've taken out a bit of the the blue kind of cyan in the shadows um, so it's a bit there's a bit more uh, red in there I guess and it's a bit more neutral really um, and the whites are, are whites you can see the these columns here you can see where my mouse is these white columns on the building um, are these traces here on the parade scope so you can see they're all hitting uh, about the same level which means our whites are white uh, we could do this a lot more accurately i guess if we had a, a color chart i didn't shoot a color chart in this case but anyway that's a balance i guess that i'm a lot happier with in terms of your node structure dehancer should really always be on the last node needs to be at the end of your node tree. So let's look again at some of these variables in Dehancer just to kind of tweak this a little bit more. The print and the film emulation I'm gonna leave alone. Um, there's not really anything on there that I wanna mess with except for on the print. I might just shift the tonal contrast a little bit. Maybe something like that. And color density. Um, I want to reduce a bit because that, that look is otherwise, the print look is a bit, is a bit strong. So we'll reduce color density a bit and saturation um, of the print look I'll bring down a bit as well to like around 95 or something like that. I, that's pretty, looking pretty good to me. I'm not going to bother with color head. Um, film grain I will mess around with a little bit. Size I'm going to leave at 1. Amount, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna put all the way down to two though, because otherwise it just look like, look, if we go full screen on this, it's pretty grainy. Like that's gonna look okay for, um, it might look okay for some 35 mil emulations, I guess. Definitely a 16 millimeter emulation, I guess, but um, I want a little bit less pronounced grain. So I'm gonna bring that all the way down to two. And now you can see the grain is still there, but it's it's a bit less uh, in your face, I guess. <laughs> um, some of the the criticisms I've I've read of uh, Dehancer have been that the grain is a little bit uh, can be a little bit much, but I think that's also people not really tweaking anything, just leaving it uh, on the defaults all the time. So film res, we'll leave it 50, shadows 75, uh, shadows 50, midtone 75, highlights 50, chroma 50, we're gonna leave uh, film type negative, um, and mode analog, and leave that enabled. So that's all the, the grain there. Then, interesting, we're gonna look at, at halation. Now halation, we've got a few different things on here that are important to understand. Um, so all of these affect the halation emulation. Your source limiter is going to limit or define the level of brightness in the image where halation occurs. So a value of zero, we can just enable it here. Um, so a level of zero means that a lot of the bright areas, kind of mid and bright areas, are going to have halation on the high contrast edges. I actually want to bring that to 50, which is kind of in the middle. If we have it at 100, it's going to be the brightest areas only um, that have halation at the, at the high contrast edges. Um, but I'll, I'll, sti I'll stick that around 50. Um, background gain defines the level of brightness of the background where halation occurs. 
So if you just want halation to occur where you've got high, very high contrast edges, so bright highlights against a very dark background, then you'll leave that at zero. Um, if you want halation even over some some mid or brighter background backgrounds, then you'll you can leave that at 100. Will give you halation against most backgrounds. Okay, I'll leave that. I'll leave that at 50 also. Um, smoothness, I'm going to put up to about 70. Smoothness is, is the distribution of your halation between large and small light sources. So large, if large areas of, of, of bright, bright, high brightness with high contrast edges uh, and smaller, like smaller light sources as well. So local diffusion is how far the light the halation effect diffuses from the edge of the, the source uh, or the bright object. Um, global diffusion is, is, is secondary glare. So bloom acts kind of like, diff like a diffusion, like if you were using a pro mist or something like that, but instead of that diffusion affecting the entire image, it's affecting just the bright parts of the image. So similar to where you're seeing halation, that's where bloom goes hand in hand. And again, it's, it's emulating a physical property of, of, of film. Um, so for this uh, highlights, I'm gonna reduce down to 50. And again, these, I've, I'm not gonna pretend that I really know what these should be. I've just been playing uh, with them and kind of learning how to tweak them. So details, I'm gonna leave on 50. Diffusion, I'm gonna leave on 70. Amplify on 50. Um, save lights 100, saturation 100, impact 60, and I'm going to enable it. That's kind of the settings that I've learned uh, through trial and error. So it, it creates a really good film emulation, especially for something shot on a phone. Uh, it, it really, it looks pretty legit in terms of color, but also in terms of halation and bloom and, uh, you know, all those kind of subtle aspects. Uh, Dehancer I'm still going to play with a bit more. I'm going to play with it on some Fujifilm F-Log footage. I'm going to play with it on, on some different sources, do some camera matching. And just to look at their website, there are a lot of great uh, articles in here about what these different things mean. So CMY, the color head you can look for here, a bit more explanation about halation. Um, you can see on the website here, and obviously this this is a bit more uh, of a of a good example than than the frame that I was grading. Um, a bit more of an you know explanation of of what it is and and how it actually comes to um, exist on, in, when you're shooting film. Some examples um, of of how this is, is looks uh, in actually you know once upon a time in Hollywood was shot on film. Um, Quentin Tarantino always shoots on film and you can see how this halation looks um, and again it's around specular highlights so very very bright highlights um, this is halation um, so yeah it's a great uh, emulation that includes these things and the, the articles on the uh, website here are really help you out a lot in, in learning how to set things this one's about bloom but really in my experience so far you have to just get into it and you have to just play around with it as well because uh, the articles as good as they are they they don't give a, a recipe necessarily of okay these are the settings that you need for this look um, they just really will help you guide you to play with these um, variables yourself and figure out how to generate the look that you want so thanks for watching. That is my quick rundown on the Dehancer Pro uh, film emulation plugin in DaVinci Resolve. So this is the OFX plugin. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'd encourage you just to play around with it. You can get a trial license on the Dehancer website. You can download and get a free trial. And yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. So give it a go. Thanks for watching. See you next time.